public mass shootings, the tragic acts of evil that are politically weaponized to drive the anti-gun narrative everywhere. Despite accounting for a fraction of the deaths in America each year compared to, choose one, lawnmowers, ladder falls, auto erotic asphyxiation, constipation, or the real killer at about 10 times the death toll of public max shootings, pools. Nonetheless, public mass shootings are sensationalized and glamorized by the media, both for their utter barbarity, as well as perhaps their political usefulness. After all, if this was simply about shaping public policy to save lives, then statistically, we ought to be talking about common sense pool control rather than AR-15 bans, since pools kill far more people per pool each year in the United States than AR-15s kill per rifle each year in the United States. But let's not let facts get in the way of grabbing guns. If you do want to see a video about how insanely and statistically safe AR-15s and other so-called assault weapons are, that is linked in the description box as well as pinned in the comment below shortly after the video launching. In this video, I will be sharing a National Institute of Justice study recently done that surveys all American mass public shootings from 1966 to more or less present. We will explore the firearms, the shooters, their targets, mental health, warning signs, and motivating factors before closing on our quote of the day. Let's get into it. Suicidal trend. The first thing, and this really pervades this entire study in my view, is the suicidality involved. Public mass shootings are, among many, many other things, a form of suicide. You will either be killed or go to prison forever. There's really no third option. Both are a form of death. Hence, why they are a form of suicide. Predictably, public mass shooters displayed unusually high amounts of suicidal thoughts and modalities prior to their evil acts. On the whole, 30% of public mass shooters were suicidal before their events, with an additional 39% becoming suicidal during the shooting itself. For younger shooters who often target schools, they were suicidal for K-12 through schools 92% of the time compared to 100% of the time when we're sampling the shooters who are targeting universities and college campuses. About 31% of persons who perpetrated mass shootings were found to have experienced severe childhood trauma. Mental health. When we talk about mental health, it becomes a little less clear what is going on. Psychosis does play a minor role in approximately a third or about 33% of cases, but took the driver's seat as a primary role in about 10% of them. However, nearly all mass public shooters were in some state of mental health crisis in the days or weeks leading up to their shooting. Now, when I read that, I have to confess, as somebody who does not have a degree in psychology, I was unclear as to exactly what constitutes a state of crisis. Well, apparently the literature agrees because the literature is unclear as well. So here's a quick sampling of what I found out there. If you're wondering what a state of crisis is, according to one U.S. government website that I found, quote, a crisis state comes into being when these new attempts fail to return us to the pre-crisis level of emotional balance. Crisis is a state of feeling and internal experience of confusion and anxiety to the degree that formerly successful successful coping mechanisms fail us and ineffective decisions and behaviors take their place, end quote. So to layer onto that, here are three shorter definitions that I found from sampling different healthcare and medical resources. The first one, quote, people are in a state of crisis when they face an obstacle to important life goals and obstacle that is, for a time, insurmountable by the use of customary methods of problem solving. That's from Kaplan, 1961. Number two, quote, an upset in equilibrium at the failure of one's traditional problem solving approach, which results in disorganization, hopelessness, sadness, confusion, and panic, end quote. That's from Lillibridge and Cluckin, 1978. And lastly, we have, quote, crisis is a perception or experience of an event or situation as an intolerable difficulty that exceeds the person's current resources and coping mechanisms, end quote. That's from James and Gilliland, 2001. Let's talk about warning signs. There are often warning signs, and this actually kind of surprised me, there are often warning signs prior to mass shooting events. 
About half of people who perpetrate mass shootings somehow leak or tip their plans in advance to the tune of about 48% of the time. This rate actually skyrockets in the case of school shootings to about 78% of the time. The typical people learning of the leaks and who they're being leaked to are probably who you could have predicted. Family members, friends, work colleagues in the case of adults, as well as both strangers and law enforcement. About 23.4% of the time, there's some kind of so-called legacy token. In other words, some sort of sick manifesto is left behind by the shooter. Relationship to victims. In both school shootings as well as workplace shootings, it becomes far more common that the perpetrators are classified as, quote, insiders. An insider is someone that has some kind of special inside connection to the scene where they choose for their event. For example, maybe they went to that school where they chose to shoot at, or maybe they worked at that workplace where they chose to shoot at. Those are two common examples that would qualify somebody as an insider. It is worthwhile to note that since the 1970s, the only statistically significant change to motivations by mass shooters is actually a decrease in shootings motivated by employment issues. Kind of a non sequitur, but just thought I'd throw that in here. Let's talk about the firearms used. Contrary to media reports, the overwhelmingly preferred weapon of public mass shooters are handguns at 77.2% of the time. About 25.1% of the time, there's some kind of what the study classified as a so-called assault weapon being used. I'm talking presumably about a sporting rifle, such as AR-15s and things like that. 77% of the time, the weapons were purchased legally compared to 13% of the time being purchased illegally. I'm aware that only adds up to 90%. I'm inferring that 10% of the time the study just didn't know or couldn't source the statistics. In school shooting cases, about 80% of the time, the weapons were stolen from family members. So adults, parents, if you do have a child who's going through tremendous issues, please, please, please make sure that your firearms are safely secured, locked, and stored away so that children cannot access them. Of course, here we have the old battle cry for what else? Universal background checks. Well, 77% of the time, these weapons were sourced legally, so that's not going to change anything. And of course, if you're purchasing it illegally, if you're buying it illegally off someone in the street or wherever the case may be, again, that's not going to be going through a background check. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Again, speaking as a former state criminal prosecutor and criminal defense attorney as well, bad guys don't usually go through background checks. And if a bad guy wants to get a gun, they'll get that gun. Let's talk about the demographics. Who are the shooters? Of the 172 individuals who, as part of the study, engaged in public mass shootings covered in the database, 97.7% were male. The ages ranged from 11 to 70, with an average age of 34.1. Those shootings were 52.3% white, 20.9% black, 8.1% Latino, 6.4% Asian, 4.2% Middle Eastern, and 1.8% Native American. Most individuals who perpetrated mass shootings had a prior criminal record, 64.5% of the time, and a history of violence, 62.8% of the time, to include domestic violence, 27.9% of the time. 64% of the time, almost two-thirds of the time, the shooter had a prior criminal record. Prior criminal record. 28.5% of the time, they had a military background. Most died on the scene of their public mass shooting, with 38.4% dying by their own hand and 20.3% killed by law enforcement. Where do public mass shootings happen? Broken down by percentage, the most common place is the workplace, 30.8%. Retail establishments are second at 16.9%. Bars and restaurants, 13.4%. Residential locations, 8.1%. General outdoors, 8.1%. K-12 schools, 7.6%. Places of worship, 6.4%. A college or university, 5.2%. And some sort of government or place of civic importance as classified by the study, 3.5%. Okay, guys, 
I've got two big sections coming up and there's one big fact that I know you down the lens is going to want to hear about good guys, whether they're wearing a badge or not, and what percentage of the time do they stop school shooters. So stick around for that as well as our big quote of the day. I want to let you know that the studies I'm looking at here, first off, is not just one study. There's multiple studies. And the one big study I cited during the introduction actually incorporates, it's kind of a study of studies in some ways, and that is looking at a bunch of different things. So if you want to see more information, believe me, there's so many things I did not have time to cover here. So let me know in the comments section below. Also, if you want to support us and if you want to give me feedback on basically what kind of videos you'd like to see, of course, dropping a comment is one great way of doing that, but the easiest way, just be sure to click like, hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos coming out. And of course, if you want to consider becoming a member and support our project, we'd tremendously appreciate that. There's some extra goodies and giveaways. Otherwise, let's take a look at the specific findings on workplace shootings and school shootings. I coalesced a bunch of statistics to look at specifically those two areas because frankly, those are two big things I was interested in. So here we go. Workplace shootings, they're more common on Wednesdays and Thursdays. They're also more common in the months of December. Common motivating factors. Well, predictably, employment issues were cited 70% of the time. Interpersonal conflict at 23% of the time. Some sort of economic issue. Maybe there's some sort of stressor or something like that on the person's life. 13% of the time. Legal issues. Perhaps a divorce or an arrest. 13% of the time. Crisis signs cited by the study included recent acts of aggression. Recent stressors. Abusive. Losing reality, paranoia, depression, and isolation. These signs, or one of them, were exhibited in 76% of shooters almost immediately prior to the shooting and the time leading up to it. In workplace shooters, 17% of the time, they displayed some sort of suicidal ideation prior to the shooting, and that upticked to 57% of the time during the shooting. Workplace shooters leaked their plans about 47% of the time. Let's look specifically at school shootings. Now, I have this broken down a little bit differently. How did they start? 91% of the time, the shooter is a current or former student at the school. 87% of the time, they were in some state of crisis prior to the shooting. 80% of the time, and again, I understand that some of these statistics are a little bit different than what we covered up above. I'm blending actually a couple different studies together in different sources. The meta study by the National Institute of Justice actually was a sampling of different studies to kind of different combined things. This specific study I'm citing to involving workplace and school shootings was one of the studies, one of the sources used. So I understand there's some contradiction here. I get that, but just the same here I am just trying to give it to you. 80% of the time, they were suicidal prior to school shootings. And 78% of the time, this I mentioned before, they leaked plans ahead of time. 50% of the time, the murderer specifically targeted a certain individual. How were school shootings stopped? 32% of the time, the bad guy, the perpetrator, attempted an escape. 13% of the time, they stopped on their own. 5% of the time, they stopped due to a weapon failure. 22% of the time, they stopped due to suicide. Here we go. 28% of the time, they stopped by law enforcement. And 21% of the time, they stopped by someone else, including concealed carriers. So you're almost as likely to have a non-law enforcement concealed carrier or good Samaritan stop the school shooter as you are to have someone wearing a badge stop the school shooter. Keep that in mind. Thank you for sticking around this long. Please don't forget to hit that like button. And here's our quote of the day. This one comes from astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, quote, the greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance. It is the illusion of knowledge. Thanks for sticking around and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.